If the Chinese people are coming to your piece of land, you need to negotiate, you need to sit around and become equal shareholders and partners in those investments if they are coming in, in your homestead. Because you cannot tell me that you can come to my homestead and you want to make it your mind and I'm not part of that. So you, you need to find out sensible relationships as to how do you become equal partners, shareholders in these investments. Anyway, I cannot help you. I cannot help you much. If you are just born with a negative vibe around you and all you see are things that are going bad and this country will never be right, hey, suit yourself. Some of us have started to wake up every morning and are excited about the country. We are looking here and there and seeing how best we I just bought some equipment right now for mining and this and this and this. I also want to get in there and dig my gold on my own farm. I'm not asking the government, I'm not asking China to come and help me to mine those things. These, these are the issues that we are talking about. That as a country, let's begin to realize what we have. And I want to encourage someone here who might be feeling sad and discouraged and they are working and they're not getting much money in South Africa. You may be shocked, my brother. You may be shocked, my sister, that while you are struggling and trying to make ends meet here, someone is digging in your farm. Someone is digging on your estate. Someone is digging on your plot. And there are resources, there are minerals that are in your country. So before you can die of discouragement and depression, you may want to do a research and find out who are you, where do you come from, what do you have. Yes, those mining laws are beautiful. They need to be challenged because they were not written by Africans. They were written by whites to protect, they have, to protect the Africans from their own resources. So we need you to come to the country and go through these laws of mining. And, and challenge those laws and say, this one is no longer relevant. This one is no longer relevant. You cannot be asking a Zimbabwean person to pay 100 million to start mining. Where do you think I'll get the 100 million? We need to go to the government and challenge legislature. Now it makes sense what I've always been telling you. That you cannot be changing leaders and you are not changing the system. Because the system is the one that incubates those laws. So who can stand up right now when you are busy running away in Canada, in Russia, in Germany, and in Japan, and in South Africa, and then you're always complaining, but the laws, but the laws. Who will change the law until you come back into the country, walk up into that government, walk up into that parliament, and change and gazette those legislative frameworks? No one will do it for you. As long, and unfortunately, I must say this, it's unfortunate that we have left politics to, not, to the people that are not as is mentally alert as i might want to put it that this some of these guys who just sit in parliament there don't even understand have a clue about what laws are all about they just sit there to receive their allowances and they go home that time is over we need active young people who can join the system get into the system get to influence the laws of education the laws of pharmaceuticals, the laws of entertainment, the laws of mining, the laws of land. The, there are many laws that need to be challenged because our governments, when they came into power, they inherited a colonial law system. Our presidents are managing a colonial legal framework. That's a fact. Now, it takes you as people to challenge that framework, to readjust that framework, to get there and vote and do whatever and transform that framework. Change the system. You can't be changing drivers and the car is not moving. Then you think you go anywhere further. Fix the car. Fix the legislative framework. Fix the governance structures. Fix those laws that are actually a leash on the neck of all your political leaders. There's very little your political leaders can do until the system is transformed to favor the local people so i want to, it's not it's not easier said than done it needs effort it took the white people 400 years to build such a system you guys you want your freedom on a plate you want to walk into a new zimbabwe and find freeways and highways and etc but you're not prepared to become part of the solution to deliver that zimbabwe that you want so my two cents worth it's worth a while to go back home. Uh, it's worth a while. I'm migrating between the two spaces, children are in school and stuff like that. And, but I am so excited to be part of this new dispensation, the new Zimbabwe. 
there are lots of opportunities, lots of opportunities in, in Zimbabwe. And I'm glad that the wheat quota has been met. We're just waiting for the harvest season of maize and uh, our grains. We can confirm, I think, before June, July, that our reserves of food in the, the country are perfect. We are waiting. I'll report on you again the developments on the Nkai Dam, the developments on the Lupani Hospital, the developments on the Gwai, on the Gwai, on the Gwai Dam, and uh, that actually the biggest hospital in the country right now is Lupane, right there in Matabele Land. And the beautiful projects that are taking off in the country. And immediately also, I will make a report again on the Wanki Colliery and Kariba power, power, excess power that we are going to be generating before the end of the year. We have been told in very high confidence that we will look at electricity as something, uh, electricity shortage as a problem of the past. The problem of the past, the, yes, the part of the problem why the electricity was off, those machines and those generators that were built in the 1960s, 1940s, 50s, uh, British machines, uh, then we are, you put us on sanctions, then you refused to give us the spare parts to fix the same power stations. And they were defunct, they were old. Same with the water systems also in some certain cases. The spare parts of those things cannot be, cannot be found on, on the context that you are, you, you are sanctioned, you cannot be doing business. So new machineries, new technologies are coming into space, then the, and the, both the green energies and the renewable energies and the coal, gas, and uh, you know, powered power stations. We should be able to have enough power by the end of this year. I think I heard about June, July also, that the Wangi Power Colliery Station would be firing all out and we could be back there to start selling electricity to neighboring countries. And once electricity is in place, we are looking at also building and uh, improving on the uh, cement, uh, the whole cement we are buying right now for about $20, $19, dollars It should be able to drop to not more than $1.99. And once cement is plenty, development, infrastructure, housing, roads, and etc. So it, the, the system of developing a country has various aspects that are able to enable the environment so that it becomes active to produce that. And I'm not just saying this for Zimbabwe. I'm saying this for the African continent in total. That stop just sitting around and complaining and being a, a, being a complainant. Complainant. You, you put yourself in a victim mindset. Wake up in the morning and say, what can I do for my country? Not what can my country do for me. What can I do for my country? And that's the mindset we're looking at. What can I do for Africa? Not what can Africa do for me. It's your participation, your contribution that makes a difference. With those few words, I... Keep them for yourself. Don't make your problem our problem. With those few words, you are Af Africans just like me. Let's do something positive for our continent today. I want to challenge all of you with more than 123 people that are on this page right now. And uh, of those 120 people, just write something positive about your continent. Be it your country, be it your, your, your rivers, be it your mountains. Something nice about your country. Just let's, let's fill, fill up this social media space with some positive news about our own continent.